Today we're taking a look at the Cooler Master Master Air MA824. The MA824 is a dual tower heatsink for gaming builds and Cooler Master had sent this over for review. This is definitely one of the beefier tower heatsinks that I have tested in quite a while. Definitely not for small builds. If you're running an especially hot CPU or if you're looking to really overclock and you want to do that on air cooling, this would be the type of cooler that you're looking for. It's coming in at 162 mil long, 156 millimeters wide, and 165.6 millimeters tall. This heatsink almost reminds me of the D15 in terms of size and weight, but the overall aesthetic of the MA824 Stealth is, well, subjectively in my opinion, way better. This is a much nicer looking heatsink. This heatsink features eight larger heat pipes and two different sized fans to help remove heat. The inner fan is a 135 millimeter model that has a max speed of 1550 RPM and it pushes a max of 63 CFM and that's at 1.92 millimeters to H2O worth of pressure. The 135 millimeter center fan is rated at a max noise output of 24.6 dBA the included 120 millimeter fan that goes at the back of the heatsink has a max speed of 1,950 RPM with a max CFM of 63.1 and a max pressure rating of 2.69 millimeters to H2O. 135 millimeter fan is rated for a maximum noise output of 24.6 dBA and the 120 is rated for 22.6 dBA. I would have assumed the 135mm fan would have been a little bit quieter than the 120, but maybe it's something to do with the fin or frame design. This is a pretty formidable push-pull air tower. We're getting mounting support on all modern sockets, AM4, AM5, uh, LGA 1200, and 1700 on the Intel side, and the cooler does come with a decently long PWM splitter cable, which is very nice to see. This cooler does offer up to 42 millimeters worth of clearance for memory modules. You should always check the clearance for your memory modules, especially when you're purchasing them and when you're purchasing a cooler. It'll definitely come into play, especially if you populate a 4 dim slot motherboard. I tested the cooling performance on my Ryzen 7700X gaming rig to see how well the cooler could tame the heat on the 7700X. The 7700X is definitely limited by temperature first, then power. I ran the 7700X at PBO settings with auto overclocking enabled. In general, I think that's how the majority of users are actually going to use this cooler on a Ryzen CPU like this, so that's why I tested that way. The ambient temperature during testing was about 72 Fahrenheit. The real bench testing lasted for 8 hours, and the Prime 95 tests were all 1 hour each. I'm a real big fan of ASUS's RealBench testing. I think it makes sense to test the CPU at the same time as the GPU so you can really get a sense of the overall cooling performance of your system. I've got a new RX 7600 installed today as well. In the 8 hour combined test for ASUS RealBench, the Ryzen 7700X cores averaged 95C, which is actually normal for this CPU, and the core speed across all of the cores averaged about 4.98 GHz, which is actually pretty good for my CPU and motherboard combo. For the all-out testing, I ran Prime 95 with the smallest FFT. After the hour of testing, I averaged all the cores out, and it looks like we were at about 95C again, with an average clock rate of 4.8 GHz, which is actually a pretty solid core speed for this particular stress test. This is a very high heat and high intensity test, so that's good to see. At idle, the cooler was relatively silent. The whole system overall was about 31 dBA, and at load, it was about 34.5 dBA. I measured that with my smartphone at about 3 or 3.1 feet away from the PC. I know this model is huge and it's actually marketed as the stealth model, but I do think that some higher pressure fans might even help the temperatures on this cooler a little bit more. As I mentioned earlier, this cooler is absolutely massive. I think there's a ton of potential here for really good air cooling. In terms of case compatibility, definitely check the maximum cooler height. I installed this in my TMP520 and it literally just barely fit. The very edge of the heatsink is actually just pressing up against the tempered glass a little bit, but it fit and there's no issues. So definitely confirm that before purchasing. Overall, I really like this cooler. It's huge, it's quiet, does a pretty good job at removing the heat on my Ryzen 7700X, 
and I think it's going to make a pretty good high-end cooler in gaming PC builds. If you like this one, smash that thumbs up button and then get subscribed to the channel for more gaming and home lab videos. I'll have links to the build and the heatsink in the description below, so definitely head down there and check it out. Let me know in the comment section what kind of coolers you want me to test next.